Hey, what is up guys? MKBHD here, and this is the OnePlus 7. Not the OnePlus 7 Pro, the OnePlus 7. It's that phone that you might have forgotten existed, but if you know anything about OnePlus phones, it became pretty familiar pretty quick. So we had the OnePlus 7 Pro already. I've raved about this phone, and I'll, I'll link the full review below if you wanna check it out. The 7 is just like the OnePlus 6T, but refreshed for this year. So we already have the OnePlus 6, it got refreshed a couple months later, became the OnePlus 6T. So this is like a OnePlus 6T T. So it doesn't have any of the crazy features of the Pro. It's just a solid, steady phone making all the safe moves for a lower price. It has a teardrop notch instead of the pop-up camera. It's their classic 1080p 60 hertz OLED display they've been going with instead of the crazy 1440p 90 hertz OLED of the Pro. It has their 20 watt dash charger instead of the crazy 30 watt warp charging. It has a regular vibration motor instead of the amazing one from the Pro. And it has a healthy six or eight gigs of RAM instead of an absolutely massive up to 12. And has one less camera. It drops the ultra wide and it's just the standard camera and the telephoto. I wish they'd kept the standard and the ultra wide like the S10e since I believe the ultra wide is way more useful and more fun than a telephoto. And I feel like everyone's realizing this in 2019, but that's not what they did, still a 2X. So basically you can think of this as either a stripped down OnePlus 7 Pro or what I think is more accurate, uh, a refreshed OnePlus 6T. And what they've done is kept a lot of the things that people liked about the OnePlus 6T, which by the way, was a pretty good phone, won my phone of the year last year, and they've continued it in this one. So now it has the Snapdragon E55, still the newest chip. It's got that clean Oxygen OS with frequent software updates. And if you haven't already noticed, this one is running the Android Q beta, so that's why it's got a little bit of a different look and the different buttons and quick settings, etc. cetera. OnePlus phones are some of the only ones that can get the betas this early. The alert slider is still here, Awesome as always, although for whatever reason, it's just a little bit smaller, just a little bit. Uh, it has six or eight gigs of RAM, like I mentioned. It's not 12, but it's still more than the Pixel, for example, can say right now. And then the front speaker grill and the speaker itself are a little bit bigger. Uh, it doesn't make a huge sound difference for music and videos, but low key, it is a bigger target area to hold the phone up when making phone calls, so that's nice. Matter of fact, there are certain things to like more about the 7 than the 7 Pro for certain people. So for example, it's a smaller phone. And plenty of people, including me, felt the 7 Pro is just a little bit on the big side. So the size of the 7 is more comfortable in the hand, more pocketable, easier to reach the tops and corners, things like that. There's not that many compact flagships, you know? And it's a flat display instead of a curved one that sort of bleeds over the edges. I talked about this in the 7 Pro review. I'm not the biggest fan of the curved glass and the extra glare and the accidental touches that'll come with that, so I'm pretty happy with the flat display. And then just little things, like it's a little bit more likely to be water resistant thanks to the complete lack of moving parts, no pop-up camera, so no worries about durability, and of course, the phone is cheaper. It starts at 500 pounds. So the OnePlus 6T T, AKA OnePlus 7, I feel like if OnePlus only released this phone this year and no OnePlus 7 Pro, we'd all still kind of know this is obviously an incremental improvement over last year, but that wouldn't be such a bad thing because we already know the OnePlus 6T was already a great phone. But so many other things have happened in the phone world in just the past couple months that this relatively minor improvement just got really easy to fall under the radar. You can also get it to stand out or look a bit different if you want with a skin from our channel sponsor dbrand if you want to. Also, since they don't make any matte black version of this phone this year, you gotta take that upon yourself to get rid of fingerprints. And speaking of take it upon yourself, if you really do wanna import this phone, you have to take it upon yourself and pay a little extra for the shipping to get it to your region and make sure the bands work with your carrier of choice and all that, which they usually do, but it's worth checking. So if you just search OnePlus 7 on Google or YouTube or anything like that, you will get bombarded with OnePlus 7 Pro photos and videos and articles and everything. It's so easy to forget that this OnePlus 7 exists. Why? Why did this phone fall so far under the radar? Well, there are two main reasons, one that I love and one that I don't love so much. To start with the one I don't love so much, this phone is so under the radar because that's where OnePlus put it. Like they're not launching this phone in the US, so it's focusing more heavily on Europe and Asia, but also OnePlus is actively moving their brand positioning from straight up budget to much more premium. And part of that is attacking the higher margin, higher price market. So not only is OnePlus 7 Pro a great phone, 
but that's what it's doing for them, legitimizing their more expensive products. They're going from flagship killer to, hey, we also make a flagship, fine. But the other reason it's under the radar is because everyone else is kind of putting it there. The competition is putting it there. There has never been more competition at this sort of premium mid-tier price than there is right now. Asus Zenfone 6, Samsung A70, Redmi K20 Pro, Pixel 3a, Pocophone 2 is probably coming out soon. It's lit. So this is your PSA that the OnePlus 7 is an option to import for the price, but it's just that now. It's an option. It's not the clear front runner anymore, and it's got a whole bunch of very interesting competition in that little slot from like $300 to $600. That being said, I do still really like this phone. There's a lot of things from that phone of the year that it takes and continues, and I can see myself using it every day. And that's not something I say about every phone, so that says a lot about the OnePlus 7. And it also represents that shift in priorities for OnePlus as a company and just the markets in general. And it also represents a very crowded radar, which if you know what I know about competition is a good thing for all of us. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.